A live look at western Florida's residents who haven't left yet brace for Hurricane Irma's onslaught. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. The outer bands have moved in, and tens of thousands in the Sunshine State are already out of power. With the brunt of Irma now just a few hours away from lashing the Florida Keys and moving north up the western part of the state. We have live TV coverage tonight of what could be a history-making storm. We'll get a live update on Irma's track in just a few moments, but we begin with Adam Housley in Key Largo, which is in its direct path. Adam? Yeah, Judge, you know, we actually moved from the other side of the island about an hour and a half to two hours ago. That was the ocean side. We're now on the bay side. Over here, the winds, you can't hear it. The wind is still blowing actually pretty good on this side. We're kind of back in a little area that's protected from the wind. You can hear it. You can't necessarily see it, but the rain's really starting to come down heavy now. We didn't have this heavy of a rain before. Uh, that's picked up significantly now since we've moved to this side of the island. You can see it come down all around. When we drove around earlier when there was still light, you can see that much of the Keys is deserted. Many people who normally stay for storms, who've stayed for storms in the past, including 25 years ago for that epic storm, Hurricane Andrew, many of those folks got out this time. They said, we're not going to challenge this. We're not going to test it. And they left. There are some still here, though. And there's some that are here not by choice. Folks that maybe tried to get a plane ticket, tried to find some place to go, didn't want to go to a shelter. Some of them are staying at a hotel here in town that's Category 5 rated. We ran up, ran into them earlier today. Here's what, with some of the reasons why they stayed. Take a listen. Well, we couldn't get out. Our flights were canceled. We got stuck. Uh, we'd be stuck in Fort Lauderdale. It wasn't worth it. And where can you drive? You can't drive anywhere. So we're here. Now, the power is out in parts of the Keys, not everywhere. There's some power actually came back on in Key Largo. Our quadrant, where we are, unfortunately, is still out. Uh, but there's widespread power outages all around here. Um, as you can see, the rain's coming down. The storm surge we started to see on the other side, and Judge, before we left there. But you see the, the water start to lapping over. Uh, some of the docks went under. We saw at least four boats destroyed, blown up against the, the rock jetties that, that their, their anchors weren't able to hold them. Uh, we're starting to see some of that same type of feel behind us when we walk out here in the dark. You can't see it on the camera, but you're seeing those boats really sway and move. The anchors are unwilling to hold them at some point. And as you can tell, perfect timing. Right when we came on with you, the rain is really starting to come down. We could get us up at 20 inches by some estimations. It really depends on what this storm does. And as you can tell by the track, it's really changed a lot. Um, and people say it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is for those down here. I mean, 10 miles this way, 10 miles that way means you're either on the bad side or the good side. So uh, right now we're on the bad side, and the, and the keys are really bracing for this, Judge. It's going to be probably a very long next 18 hours to 24 hours. Back well, to you. You know, Adam, just a, a quick question. When you talk about a Category 5 hotel, uh, and I imagine a lot of people, just as that woman had just indicated, weren't able to get out or didn't expect it to be this bad, um, what is a Category 5 hotel, and how do you get into it? And if you can't, if it's full, then it's where do you go? Right, very good question. You know, and some of the viewers have asked about it. It's not about us, but just to kind of explain, because we're part of that question as well. When you come to these type of things, the last thing you want to do is have authorities worry about you. They've already got all the locals they've got to worry about who decided to stay. So when you try to find a hotel like that, you go look for certain things. A hotel that's usually masonite block built, it usually has two or three stories up, so you don't have to worry about a storm surge because you're up above water. Uh, in our hotel's case, it only has windows on one side. It's only one window per room, and they have built-in metal storm shutters that I closed myself, and they come down like a safe. I mean, it's it's going to be very difficult for wind to get in there, and they're and they're locked, so the wind even can't can't pick them up. The roofs generally are cement, or they have very strong metal roofs. Ours. We're on the second story, so we have a cement floor above us. So you look for those type of things. That's what it means to be category rated. And a lot of the building codes were changed in Florida after Andrew. Uh, and this hotel, we were told, was built about that time. Uh, and if you look around, you can kind of tell, too, you don't want to go into a wood structure. You want something that's really going to be sturdy, generally up, uh, and, and able to withstand the wind and the water. Here, we could get depths of nine feet on a storm surge. On this side, probably not. This side, more like maybe three feet of a storm surge. But we're going to get a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Okay. Judge? All right, Adam, stay safe. Adam Housley, thanks so much from Key Largo.